because this is just coming in. Former NFL running back O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His family posting to X this morning that their father had succumbed to his battle with cancer on Wednesday. O.J. Simpson was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. Simpson played 11 seasons in the NFL. He was regarded as one of the greatest running backs of all time. He played with the Buffalo Bills. But it was really in June of 1994 when O.J.'s legacy changed forever. He turned from one of the most beloved Americans to the most one of the most infamous after he was arrested and charged with the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. After one of the most high profile trials and police pursuits in history, Simpson was found not guilty in 1995. He was eventually jailed for armed robbery in Nevada. With me now to react to this breaking news this morning is Richard Krauss. Uh, Richard, you know, we're bringing you in here because OJ he was a celebrity, if ever there was one. Mm -hmm. He started out in sports, he turned to acting, and then, of course, as we mentioned, he became infamous um, in his later years. Let's start by getting your thoughts on the passing of O.J. Simpson and really what his legacy is. Well, for better or for worse, O.J. Simpson lived at the center of popular culture a few different times during his career, uh, whether it was as uh, a Heisman uh, Trophy winning uh, amateur football player to the professional leagues uh, to making movies like The Towering Inferno and The Naked Gun films, uh, all the uh, very famous advertisements that he did on television. Uh, he was someone who people looked up to. He was someone uh, that uh, people found charismatic. They thought... This is not only a guy who is so talented on the field, but off the field, uh, he brings a certain something to everything that he does. And then, of course, as you said, in June uh, 1994, everything changed for him. And it was a really fascinating uh, turn of events in the life of someone who seemed to have lived a fairly blessed life up until that point. And then the trial happens and you could see, and I will tell you, I watched, I think, every minute of that trial on television. It was one of the first that was broadcast wall to wall on television. And you could see where he was laying back and relying on some of those tricks he had learned as an actor and as a broadcaster, someone uh, who uh, knew how to use his charisma, knew how to play to a camera, that sort of thing. And I think that uh, in large part because of who O.J. Simpson was and was regarded as before the trial, I think played into the verdict that uh, the not guilty verdict uh, that came at the end of the trial. Yeah. And it was really reality television, Richard, before mm -hmm. social media and before we were all becoming addicted to reality TV. Well, it's one of those events that we don't really get anymore. Uh, that thing where everyone is talking about the same thing. Uh, I don't know what the ratings were uh, for this trial, but I would imagine they are the biggest in court television's history. It was on the news every day. Everyone seemed to have an opinion about uh, whether he was guilty, not guilty. And it, it sort of was one of the last gasps of the monoculture. We're so splintered now in the way that we uh, absorb our information, whether it's online or on television. We don't all listen to the same music anymore. We don't all go see the same movies anymore. But every now and again, something comes up that uh, brings everyone uh, uh, everyone's attention to the same thing. And the O.J. Simpson trial was certainly that in 1994. Yeah, and prior to that, and of course we have to mention that, car chase. That well, car the white Bronco that, car yeah, chase. Yeah, the white Bronco car chase that had everyone riveted to their TV screens and everyone around O.J. Simpson was in their own right a character. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why well, you say uh, when we think of pop culture figures, O.J. is mm -hmm. up there. For the heinous nature of the crimes that he was charged with, for the, uh, the, the danger that was involved in every aspect of this case, it did become something that transcended the court case. Uh, people like Cato Kalin uh, became stars uh, after that. Judge Ito, uh, the, on The Tonight Show, uh, Jay Leno had the dancing Itos, and they would come out, and there were three or four people dressed as Judge Ito, who was presiding over the case, who would dance to songs about O.J. 
Simpson. I mean, this was something that captured everyone's uh, attention. I remember in uh, 1994 watching the white Bronco chase. I was working in a bar at the time, and we had a wall of televisions in that bar. And normally it was they were on different sports games and whatever whatever big thing was happening at the moment. Uh, and on that case, we put every television on the white Bronco chase. And even though nothing happened, and even though it could not be described as a high, uh, you know, um, it, it was not a fast chase. They weren't careening down the the uh, freeways in Los Angeles. Uh, this was a fairly slow speed chase, uh, but people were riveted. And I will never forget working in a very, very crowded bar filled with uh, people and you could hear a pin drop because everyone was just watching the screen because the idea that O.J. Simpson, this person who uh, people had admired for years, who was a sports star and a movie star and a television star, uh, had fallen uh, from grace and was behaving in this way and potentially guilty of murder uh, was just almost something that people could not believe. I was at a movie that night and I... <laughs> And I remember coming out and wondering where everybody was. And when mm -hmm. I got home, I figured out they were in front of their television sets. And you saw this playing out um, on all the networks. And you had people standing by the California highways cheering OJ on. Yeah. And then, Richard, as we point out, what a turn. What a turn it took for OJ. Um, and for viewers who are just joining us, we're a few minutes after 11 o'clock Eastern time. O.J. Simpson has died after a battle with cancer. He was 76 years old. Richard Krause is with me. And we're reflecting on O.J.'s um, career and really his fall from grace. And we're looking at these pictures. Al Cowlings, O.J.'s best friend at the time, was behind the mm -hmm. wheel, Richard. And just the impact that he made um, on, on popular culture and how everybody around him essentially became a household name. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the lawyers was uh, the, the father of some of the Kardashians. Robert I mean, this Kardashian, is a, a yep. yeah, Robert Kardashian. So this is, you know, something that was was built. Uh, to become a news story was built to be, uh, you know, something that lived at the very center of popular culture. Dominic Dunn from uh, Vanity Fair magazine, whose daughter had been murdered in her driveway uh, several years before, covered this case uh, from top to bottom and reported in a really interesting and very personal and very vivid way for Vanity Fair. And I will never forget the look on his face when they announced that Ornthal James Simpson and uh, you remember when the uh, head juror announced the verdict, her voice kind of caught a little bit as she said, Orenthal James uh, uh, Simpson, because it was, I guess she was nervous. I guess she knew that at the end of this trial, this was probably not the verdict that most people were expecting. Uh, so you could hear that little catch in her voice. And then the camera caught Dominic Dunn's face and the look of sheer disbelief on his face, his jaw quite literally hit the floor. I know it's a cliche, but if you look at video footage of it or photographs of it at the time, his jaw literally hits the floor. It was uh, one of those moments that you know was shared by millions of people on television and everyone had an opinion about it the next day. And Dominic Dunn's columns over the next couple of months were riveting reads about this. Yeah, and that verdict was so decisive. Um, the verdict, mm -hmm. of course, um, coming down for the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Lyle Goldman, who mm -hmm. were heinously murdered in Brentwood, California. Yeah. Um, O.J. Simpson was found not guilty for those deaths. He, was, he will go down um, as a suspected murderer. Um, Richard, let's talk about his career post that time um, because he tried a couple of times to sort mm -hmm. of make a comeback. He did eventually spend time in prison for a robbery in Nevada, but he did reemerge, albeit not on the same level. Um, but he did try to stay, in a sense, relevant. I think that it must be very difficult to have been uh, a superstar since you were a teenager. So uh, when he was uh, playing football, before he turned professional, uh, he was being lauded as the next big thing and he was going to be famous. And, you know, the movies and everything just seemed so effortless for him. Now, it probably wasn't, but it, it certainly appeared that way. And that's one of the things that makes a great celebrity is when it looks easy. 
when it just looks like you're sliding by on charisma and innate talent and all those X factor kind of things that people are gravitating towards or that people gravitate towards. Uh, and then when you have uh, your life turned upside down like that, it must be a very difficult uh, adjustment. Afterwards, you think, well, I was pronounced not guilty. People will love me again. And he went on to become a very divisive character. There are still O.J. Simpson fans out there, uh, or were certainly at the time. Uh, and then uh, it never really stuck. He did some time in jail. And most recently, uh, and not all that long ago, uh, he was uh, releasing videos on uh, YouTube and on uh, Instagram and social media, uh, where he would just talk about whatever was going on in his life and, and that sort of thing. But you could see the old juice. They used to call him the juice. You can see the old juice coming through. He knows how to work a camera. He knows how to be charismatic. He, he can flash that million dollar smile. But for a lot of people, it was a smile that was tarnished by the 1994 trial. Right. And today, on this day, as we bring our viewers this breaking news that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 after battling with cancer, one can't help but think of all of those people uh, who were in his sphere, and namely mm -hmm. the victims and their families. And I know you've probably interviewed uh, Kim Goldman. I spoke with Ron Goldman's yeah. sister many times over the years. And the pain that this must bring up, and again, this is something that is going to divide people because we're on the air. I can't really check in on social media, Richard, to see what people are saying. But nonetheless, there are still people to this day who believe that O.J. was innocent of those double murders. Yeah. And, and you know, people are entitled to think whatever they uh, think. I think that uh, the show business kind of nature of the trial, like we're seeing in this video clip here, the if it doesn't fit, you must acquit line. It, you know, it was branded uh, to be show business. It wasn't so much uh, a murder trial, even though, I mean, and of course, you know, everyone uh, will pay due deference to the victims in this case. Uh, but the, the trial turned into a bit of a circus. And I think people viewed it as entertainment rather than law and order. Uh, I think that they viewed it as something uh, that was uh, not real, that didn't have real life uh, um, consequences or stakes. And when you uh, interview the family members, particularly from the Goldman side, who have been very vocal uh, about their displeasure about not having been paid much of the settlement that they were awarded, uh, you know, never really getting any kind of closure on this in any real way. Uh, you realize that this cuts very deeply and that it's a very human story here. We see Marsha Hunt in this uh, Clark, video yeah. that we're, or Marsha Clark rather, yeah. that you see in this video. And you just think of all these people who became overnight celebrities because of their connection uh, to O.J. Simpson. And that's the, the kind of long shadow that this uh, trial cast. Indeed, indeed. Okay, Richard, stick with me for just a moment while I recap our breaking news for our viewers at home who may just be joining us. O.J. Simpson has died after a battle with cancer. O.J. Simpson was 76 years old. About a year ago, he posted a video on X, which was called Twitter at the time, and he talked about his cancer. He said he did chemo. He thought he'd beat it. Uh, today, though, we are learning from his family, from a message posted on X, that O.J. Simpson died Wednesday, yesterday, after a uh, cancer battle. We don't know what sort of cancer it was. There were rumors that he was in hospice, but that was um, denied. OJ thanked his supporters when he went public with his cancer diagnosis, but we learn now that OJ Simpson died at the age of 76, surrounded by his family. His family is asking for privacy and peace at this time. Um, I want to go back to you, Richard, again, because the theme of our conversation is really the impact that O.J. Simpson made on pop culture. And as you were saying from the outset of our conversation, he was in every sphere of entertainment. He spent 11 years in the NFL. He played primarily in Buffalo, just over the border here, uh, with the Bills. Then he made a foray into acting, and, and he did commercials for car rental agencies, but it was really in June of, of 1994 when we learned that his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman Jr. had been brutally murdered 
in a suburb called Brentwood in L.A. Oh, looks like I... Richard, have we got you? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. No, Sorry, and, you froze. And, yeah, uh, but that is very, very. Um, uh, it's an it's an interesting uh, recap of the life and career of O.J. Simpson because he lived at the very center of popular culture and playing at a very high level uh, in sports would be enough for most people. But then, like uh, Joe Namath before him and uh, Jim Brown before that, uh, these are, are athletes who went on to have fairly successful. Uh, movie careers. Now, he was probably never going to win an Oscar, but uh, they he starred in movies that people went and liked. And the Avis com uh, car commercials where he ran through uh, an airport were something that people talked about. This was a very extraordinarily famous person, uh, the kind of fame that very few people uh, ever really experience. And then, you know, the, the, the capper on it came in June 1994 when everything changed. And I think that is that sort of Shakespearean uh, fall from grace. Uh, I think that has really sparked people's imaginations when they think about O.J. Simpson. Uh, they think about someone who had this extraordinarily privileged life uh, and maybe, uh, you know, a uh, at the, the time of the, the murders, uh, you know, became something different in people's eyes. And it's remarkable to think of uh, now. Uh, I, I, I can't really think of a, a public figure right now uh, who would be sort of at the same level. I'm sure there are. They're not occurring to me right this second. But th to have something like this happen was very, very shocking because, again, we weren't as splintered as we are now. Uh, we weren't getting our uh, information from 100 different places. We were getting it from 10 different places. And so we were able to really focus down and really laser focus in on particular stories. And OJ and the trial was one of those ones that captivated millions of people. Richard Krauss, thank you so much. Very much appreciate you being with us as we react to this breaking news.